Welcome back to my Accounting 101 series of courses. Today, we're gonna to talk about what I believe is the second most important financial statement for a business or a business owner. In my prior video, I spoke about the most important financial statement, your income statement. So today, the second most important for me is the balance sheet, and we're gonna walk through the basics of a balance sheet right now. Hi, my name is Chris Passmore, and I'm your social media CPA. So a balance sheet, you may have also referred to this as a statement of financial position. So what is it and why is it important? A balance sheet is intended to portray the financial position of a company as a specific point in time. In contrast to an income statement, where it tells the revenues and expenses over a period of time. So an income statement will be for a year, for example, 2020, where a balance sheet will be as of a specific date. Oftentimes, it's December 31st. If you have a fiscal year or a non-calendar year end, it could be June 30th or anywhere in between. But more often than not, for small and medium-sized companies, it's normally presented with the end of the year, December 31st. So what's included on a balance sheet? So there are different sections. There are your assets, there are your liabilities and your stockholders equity. And generally, I think of a balance sheet in two sections. I'll say the top section and the bottom section. The top section is a listing of all your assets, where the bottom section is a combined listing of your liabilities and stockholders equity. And the reason why it's called a balance sheet is because the total of that top section, those assets, should equal the combined total of your liabilities and your stockholders' equity. As an example, if you have $200,000 of total assets, a proper balance sheet will then have $200,000 of combined liabilities and stockholders' equity. That's why it's called a balance sheet. Those two amounts equal each other. If they do not equal each other, then you have a problem. You have to go back to your QuickBooks file and figure out where the two went wrong. So let's talk about each section and talk more specifically about the items in the top half and the bottom half. So assets, what is an asset? Well, an asset is a financial resource available for the future use of the company. It's a lot of fancy words, but generally it means things that you can still use or still have some benefit to you in the company. And they're normally in order. They're listed in a table format in the order of liquidity or the most liquid, meaning the first item listed is almost always cash because you can spend that right away, where the last item listed might be your fixed assets or things that you use over a period of time. And it's normally ordered from those current assets, those things available today, to those long-term assets, things that you use over a three, five, or seven year period. So every balance sheet is different. It depends on you and your business, but there are some common items that are generally on all balance sheets. Uh, starting at the top in the most liquid, it's cash. This is how much you have in the bank. This is in your checking account or in your savings account. You have your accounts receivable. These are unpaid invoices due to you. So if you sent one of your customers an invoice for $100 and they have not yet paid you, you would have accounts receivable of that amount. The next item that I often see on a balance sheet is inventory. So if you're a manufacturer or a reseller of goods, you often have physical inventory available for sale. That could be electronic components, that could be food goods, but the value of that inventory, the amount that you paid for that inventory and that you haven't sold yet will go on your balance sheet and that's listed in your inventory line. Also, companies often have prepaid expenses. These are items where you've paid the cost upfront. Oftentimes, like insurance, you'll pay for a business insurance policy on day one and then you get the coverage for the next 12 months. That is prepaid and you record that amount on your balance sheet 
and you recognize the expense over the period of that insurance. There are a number of different prepaids. For example, you could buy airplane tickets for a flight next month. That would also be a prepaid because the flight is in a different period. So those are the most common current assets that I see on a company's balance sheet. Again, it's specific to each company. And now we move to the long-term assets. These are the items that are often consumed or used over a longer than a 12-month period. So this would be two, three, four, and five years. The most common long-term asset is your property, plant, and equipment, also referred to as fixed assets. These are the items that you physically own to operate and run your business. This could be your furniture. So if, for example, this table here or the chair that I'm, I'm sitting on would qualify as fixed assets or property, plant, and equipment. It could also be your computer equipment, your servers, any improvements you've made to your office. If there is a remodeling that you did, that would be a leasehold improvement. So it's a fairly broad bucket of items, but it's the hard physical assets that you need to use to operate your business. Those are your fixed assets or your property, plant, and equipment. Other long-term assets may be certain investments that you may have or deposits. If you lease your office space, oftentimes that lease term is 60 months, you must give money to the landlord that they hold for you and you don't get back until that end of that six, 60 month period, that five year period. That would be a security deposit that is rightfully your money, legally your money. You just don't have access to it for a period of time. So those are your most common assets that you will include on your balance sheet. So now let's move to the bottom half of the balance sheet. That is your liabilities and your stockholders equity. So starting with liabilities, the first item I see most often is accounts payable and accrued expenses. These are often just bills you owe to your vendors that may be for product that you purchase that you then turn around and sell to your customers. This could be your electricity bill. This could be your rent that you have to pay every month. So it's basically any invoice that you've received and have not paid yet. Uh, other current liabilities could be a line of credit balance. It could be a deferred revenue item. It could be a number of different things. Deposits that customers have given to you for their purchase. Those would all, all be current liabilities. The next liability is your long-term liability. This is traditionally debt. This is traditionally notes payable. So like when you buy a home, you pay the bank over 30 years on a mortgage. There are similar concepts for businesses. You take out a business loan and you use that money to buy a piece of capital equipment. You then have a note payable that is repaid over a certain number of years. That would go in the debt section of your balance sheet under a notes payable. So then the last section on your balance sheet is your equity. Again, this is in the bottom section, and this is the difference between your assets and your liabilities. The most common accounts that go into equity are your common stock and your retained earnings. The common stock is the value that the company received when it first issued stock. So when you first started that company up and you were handed a stock certificate that says, congratulations, you now own 100 shares of your company. When you receive that stock certificate, you likely paid a certain amount. It could be broad in amount. I've seen common stock as little as $10. I've seen it as large as $100,000. That's usually set by you when you first start the company and how much money you put into the company to capitalize and to begin operations. But the amount that you've paid for that initial common stock certificate will be represented on your balance sheet in that line item. The other most common item I see in the equity section is retained earnings. This is the amount of profit that the company has generated since its inception. And it goes into that retained earnings account to then sum up to your totals equity. 
And as I mentioned, it is called a balance sheet. So then the total of the liabilities and the equity would equal the total of your assets. And that's how you know you've presented a correct balance sheet. So that's the basic summary for a balance sheet. Again, what I believe is the second most important financial statement behind an income statement of a company. So I hope you found that useful. So please do like and subscribe my content. I do appreciate the support. And you can always find me on my website. That's socialmediacpa.com for more information on financial accounting, tax tips, and other relevant matters for small business companies.